In the heart of the Mesopotamian desert, under a sky heavy with impending doom, two great armies stood facing each other. This was not just a battle. It was a clash of empires, a confrontation of ideologies, and a fight for survival. Here at Carre in 53 BC, one of the most dramatic and consequential battles of the ancient world was about to unfold. A battle that would redefine the boundaries of power and leave its mark on history forever. The stage was set for a monumental clash of titans. The Roman Republic, at the height of its power, was led by Marcus Licinius Crassus, a man not just driven by the allure of wealth, but by a deep-seated ambition. Crassus, already a figure of immense wealth and influence within Rome, was not content with his fortunes. His eyes were set on the riches of the Parthian Empire, a realm as mysterious as it was wealthy, lying just beyond the eastern boundaries of Roman control. But Crassus's aspirations went beyond mere monetary gain. He sought glory and prestige, a desire to eclipse the fame and accomplishments of his fellow triumvirs, Julius Caesar and Pompey the Great. In his mind, a decisive victory over the Parthians would secure his legacy, elevating him to a status of military and political legend on par with, if not surpassing, his contemporaries. This pursuit of glory, however, blinded him to the realities of the campaign ahead, setting the stage for a confrontation that would become one of the most significant and defining moments of his life and of the ancient world. Crassus, despite his lack of direct military experience, possessed a confidence that bordered on hubris. He stood at the helm of seven legions, a formidable force of around 40,000 soldiers, a testament to Roman military might. This army was a reflection of Rome's imperial aspirations and Crassus's own desire for glory. However, his confidence overshadowed a crucial miscalculation. He grossly underestimated the Parthians, viewing them as a mere stepping stone to his ambitions. This underestimation stemmed partly from a lack of understanding of their combat tactics and partly from a dismissive attitude towards non-Roman military capabilities. Crassus failed to recognize the agility, strategy and sheer fighting prowess of the Parthian forces, an oversight that was not just an error in judgment, but a fatal flaw that would lead to dire consequences on the battlefield. His ignorance of the enemy's strengths and reliance on the conventional Roman approach to warfare set the stage for what would become one of the most significant military disasters in Roman history. On the other side, the Parthian army, though outnumbered by the Roman legions, harbored a unique and formidable strength in their cavalry. General Serena, a tactician of remarkable skill and insight, had meticulously honed this force into an elite military unit. The Parthian cavalry was primarily composed of two types, the heavily armored cataphracts who could break enemy lines with their sheer power, and the more renowned horse archers known for their agility and precision. These horse archers were the epitome of mobility and deadly accuracy, capable of firing their arrows with lethal effectiveness even while in full retreat, a technique that would become known as the Parthian shot. This blend of heavy and light cavalry was revolutionary, and their tactics were something the Roman legions, with their emphasis on heavy infantry and close combat formations, were completely unprepared to counter. General Serena's strategic acumen lay in leveraging this asymmetry to its fullest potential, turning what many would see as a numerical disadvantage into a powerful, game-changing weapon on the battlefield. As the Roman legions advanced under the scorching sun, they expected a traditional battle. Their minds were set on the tactics of open field combat, where the might of their swords and shields would dominate. But General Serena, the cunning Parthian commander, had other plans. He understood the limitations of his forces in a direct confrontation with the heavily armored Roman infantry. Instead, he chose to turn the harsh, desert environment into his ally. Serena meticulously led the Romans deeper into the unforgiving terrain, a strategic move akin to a chess grandmaster subtly maneuvering his opponent into a trap. The desert, with its blistering heat and treacherous sands, began to take its toll on the Roman soldiers. Weighed down by their armor and unaccustomed to the arid conditions, water supplies dwindled, and the morale of the Roman troops, unprepared for prolonged warfare in such an inhospitable landscape, began to wane. Meanwhile, the Parthian forces, adept at desert warfare and more suitably equipped for the conditions, waited patiently. They watched the Romans exhaust themselves, 
setting the stage for what would become a masterclass in tactical warfare that leveraged the natural environment to devastating effect. Then the Parthians struck with a strategy that would etch their name in the annals of military history. Their horse archers, epitomes of mobility and speed, descended upon the Roman legions like a whirlwind of death. These archers, mounted on swift horses, maneuvered with an agility that the heavily armored Romans couldn't match. They unleashed a relentless storm of arrows, each volley methodically orchestrated to create maximum chaos and destruction. The Romans, encased in their heavy armor, felt the full brunt of the desert's oppressive heat, further exacerbated by their burdensome gear. Sweat and sand mixed with blood as they struggled to adapt to this unforeseen style of combat. Their training and tactics honed for the brutal close-quarters combat of the Mediterranean battlefields were rendered almost obsolete in the face of the Parthians' hit-and-run tactics. This relentless barrage of arrows coming from archers who seemed to materialize from the very desert air only to disappear just as quickly created a sense of helplessness among the Roman ranks as the arrows rained down piercing through the small gaps in their armor and shields the Roman formations began to falter. The precision and discipline that had long been the hallmark of Roman military might were being dismantled piece by piece by an enemy that refused to engage in a traditional fight, instead weaving a deadly dance of war around the beleaguered legions. The Romans, in response to the relentless onslaught of Parthian arrows, resorted to their renowned defensive formation, the Testudo or Tortoise Formation, Soldiers would align their shields to form a protective shell over and around themselves, a strategy typically effective against projectile attacks. However, this formation, while offering some respite from the barrage of arrows, had a significant drawback in the vast open desert. It rendered the Roman soldiers virtually immobile. This immobility turned the Roman legions into sitting ducks for the Parthians, who were masters of mobile warfare. The Parthians, adept at horseback archery, executed the Parthian shot, a technique where archers shot their arrows at the enemy while in full retreat. This tactic was not only a display of remarkable equestrian and archery skills, but also a strategic masterstroke. It allowed the Parthians to stay out of reach of Roman swords while continuously whittling down the Roman forces. The Romans, clad in heavy armor and unaccustomed to such tactics, found themselves in a dire situation. Their formation, once a symbol of Roman military discipline and strength, became their downfall in the face of the Parthians' superior mobility and unconventional warfare tactics. As the arrows rained down, piercing through the gaps in the Testudo, the Roman ranks were thrown into chaos, with each soldier struggling for survival against an enemy who was everywhere and nowhere at once. As hours turned into days, the desert's unforgiving heat and the scarcity of water took a brutal toll on the Romans. Soldiers, already exhausted from the constant movement and the weight of their armor, began to falter. The Parthians, exploiting their enemy's vulnerability, intensified their attacks. Arrow volleys rained down relentlessly, causing chaos and panic within the Roman ranks. General Crassus, witnessing the disintegration of his once formidable army and desperate to salvage the situation, sought to negotiate a truce. But General Surena, a master of deception as well as warfare, had laid a trap. As Crassus, accompanied by a few advisors, entered the Parthian camp under the guise of diplomatic parley, tensions escalated quickly. Misunderstandings and suspicion led to a violent skirmish. In the midst of this chaos, Crassus was killed either by his own men to prevent his capture or by the Parthians. His death was more than just a personal tragedy. It struck a devastating blow to the Roman army's morale and leadership. The loss of their commander in such a treacherous manner shattered the Roman soldiers' spirit and resolve, marking a turning point in the battle and indeed in the history of Rome's eastern campaigns. The Battle of Cary, with its devastating outcome for the Romans, marked a significant turning point in Roman history. Until then, Rome had been an unstoppable force, rapidly expanding its borders and asserting its dominance across the known world. This battle, however, shattered the myth of Roman invincibility. The defeat not only halted their eastward expansion, but also sent shockwaves through the political landscape of Rome. The death of Crassus, a key member of the First Triumvirate, destabilized the delicate balance of power within Rome's political elite.
This event exacerbated existing rivalries and power struggles, particularly between Julius Caesar and Pompey the Great, setting the stage for the series of civil wars that would ultimately lead to the fall of the Roman Republic. Thus, the repercussions of Carrie were not just military but also deeply political contributing significantly to the end of the Republican era and paving the way for the rise of the Roman Empire under Augustus. The defeat at Carai became a historical lesson in overconfidence and strategic miscalculation, reminding future generations of the perils of underestimating an adversary and the importance of adaptability in the face of new forms of warfare. The death of Crassus at Cari was more than just a personal tragedy, it had profound implications for the Roman Republic. His demise destabilized the already fragile balance of power within the ruling triumvirate, which had been maintaining a delicate equilibrium in Roman politics. Crassus, with his immense wealth and influence, had been a counterbalance to the ambitions of his fellow triumvirs, Julius Caesar and Pompey the Great. With Crassus gone, the power dynamics shifted dramatically. Pompey, now unchallenged in Rome, grew increasingly uneasy with Caesar's rising popularity and military successes in Gaul. This tension eventually erupted into a civil war, marking the end of the Roman Republic's collaborative rule. The vacuum left by Crassus accelerated Caesar's ascent to unparalleled power culminating in his dictatorship. Caesar's rule, though short-lived, dramatically altered the course of Roman history. His assassination and the subsequent power struggles led to the rise of his adopted heir, Octavian, later known as Augustus, who would become the first Roman emperor. Thus, the disastrous defeat at Carrhae indirectly set in motion the events that transformed the Roman Republic, an entity defined by its complex system of checks and balances into the Roman Empire, characterized by centralized imperial rule. The battle's aftermath is a stark reminder of how the fates of individuals can steer the course of history, reshaping entire political systems and altering the destiny of nations. Kari indeed goes beyond being a mere historical event. It's a striking example of military innovation and strategic mastery. This battle underscored the critical importance of not just sheer numbers or strength, but the deeper understanding of the environment and adapting to the enemy's tactics. The Parthians, though outnumbered, demonstrated a superior grasp of these principles. They brilliantly used their mobility and exceptional archery skills, turning the harsh desert terrain from a mere backdrop into a tactical ally. Their strategy of utilizing hit-and-run tactics, exemplified by the infamous Parthian shot, was revolutionary. It wasn't just about having the right tools, but using them in the most effective way possible. In doing so, they effectively outmaneuvered and overwhelmed a traditional superpower, setting a precedent in military history. The Battle of Carre serves as a pivotal lesson in warfare. Victory often belongs not to the mightiest or the most numerous, but to those who can best adapt to their circumstances and exploit their unique strengths against the vulnerabilities of their foes. Today, the Battle of Karhi is more than just a story of defeat and victory. It's a lesson in humility, strategy, and the ever-changing nature of warfare. As we look back, we're reminded of the echoes of history in our present, teaching us that the greatest strength often lies in adaptability and understanding. So, as the sun set over the Mesopotamian desert, the world had changed. Empires rose and fell, but the lessons of Karai remain etched in the annals of history. It is a powerful reminder of the complexities of war and the ever-shifting sands of time. If you enjoy this episode, please like, share and subscribe to our channel so as not to miss upcoming episodes. This is History Replay this day. Thanks for watching. We will see you in the next episode.